Hi friends, and welcome to your daily devotional for Friday, November 6th, 2020. Our prayers again today come from a resource called Daily Prayer, Supplemental Liturgical Resource 5, published by the PCUSA and Westminster Press. This week we've been talking about God's presence in our lives. In the next few moments, I invite you to reflect on whether or not there is something hindering your ability to feel God's presence right now. And if there is, what can you do about it? Our word from the psalmist today is Psalm 70, and all of the readings today are from the Common English Bible. Listen now for God's word to us. Hurry, God, to deliver me. Hurry, Lord, to help me. Let those who seek my life be ashamed and humiliated. Let them fall back and be disgraced, those people who delight in my downfall. Let those who say, aha, aha, stop because of their shameful behavior. But let all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. And let those who love your saving help say again and again, God is great. But me, I'm poor and needy. Hurry to me, God. You are my helper and my deliverer. O oh Lord, don't delay. Let us pray. You rescue us daily, God, and set us in places of safety, for we are your people. Let us listen always to your voice, that we may be filled with goodness and nourished by your Spirit, strong to serve with Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Our Old Testament reading today comes from Joshua, chapter 8, verses 30 through 35. Listen for God's word. Then Joshua built an altar on Mount Ebal to the Lord, the God of Israel. This was exactly what Moses, the Lord's servant, had commanded the Israelites. It is what is written in the instruction scroll from Moses, an altar of crude stones, against which no iron tool has swung. On it they offered entirely burned offerings to the Lord and sacrificed well-being offerings. There, in the presence of the Israelites, Joshua wrote on the stones a copy of the instruction from Moses, which Moses had written earlier. All Israel, with its elders, officers and judges were standing on either side of the chest. They were facing the Levitical priests who carry the Lord's chest containing the covenant. They included both immigrants and full citizens. Half stood facing Mount Gerizim and half stood facing Mount Ebal. This was exactly what Moses, the Lord's servant, had initially commanded for the blessing of the Israelite people. Afterward, Joshua read aloud all the words of the instruction, both blessing and curse, in agreement with everything written in the instruction scroll. There wasn't a single word that Moses had commanded that Joshua failed to read aloud in the presence of the entire assembly of Israel. This assembly included the women and small children, along with the immigrants who lived among them. Joshua read this instruction scroll to everyone, including women, children, and immigrants. Why do you think the author made a point to mention this?
Our New Testament reading today is a continuation of yesterday's reading. We'll be looking at Revelation chapter 9, verses 13 through 21. Listen again for God's word to us. Then the sixth angel blew his trumpet, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the gold altar that is before God. It said to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, Release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. Then the four angels who had been made ready for that hour, day, month, and year were released to kill a third of humankind. The number of cavalry troops was 200 million. I heard their number, and this is the way I saw the horses and their riders in the vision. They had breastplates that were fiery red, dark blue, and yellow as sulfur. The horses' heads were like lions' heads, and out of their mouths came fire, smoke, and sulfur. By these three plagues, a third of humankind was killed by the fire, smoke, and sulfur coming out of their mouths. The horse's power is in their mouths and their tails, for their tails are like snakes with heads that inflict injuries. The rest of humankind who weren't killed by these plagues didn't change their hearts and lives and turn from their handiwork. They didn't stop worshiping demons and idols made of gold, silver, bronze, stone, and wood, idols that can't see or hear or walk. They didn't turn away from their murders, their spells and drugs, their sexual immorality, or their stealing. And this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Even after witnessing all of that destruction and death, John of Patmos tells us that those who remained didn't change their hearts. Why do you think they were more willing to continue on with life as they knew it instead of acknowledging the source of what was going on around them? Let us pray. Lord God, you so tend the vine you planted that now it extends its branches throughout the world. Keep us in Christ as branches on the vine that, grafted firmly in your love, we may show the whole world your great power and bear the fruit of righteousness through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, may the peace of Christ rule in your hearts to which indeed you have been called into one body. And be thankful. Go in peace. Stay healthy. I'll see you tomorrow.